start today by asking you an honest question, and that is this. How are you using the precious free time during this pandemic? Are you just using that time to be you, the same old, same old you, day in and day out? Or are you using this precious free time to become a better person? That's what I want to talk about today. You know, when I look at the news, and I'm sure you notice the same thing, I, I notice people who fall into both those categories. You know, on the one hand, there are people who are using their precious free time to scam other people. Can you imagine? To scam other people. There are individuals who are using their precious time during this pandemic to just be lazy. To use it as an excuse to just like, okay, school's out and so I don't need to do anything. And then there are people who are using their free time to play predictably the blame game. You know, to blame the the virus on their favorite boogeyman. First and foremost, God, of course, that's always a perennial favorite, right? But also nowadays, global warming, that's become another favorite. But there's also Christians. Christians are to blame for the virus. And then there's planet Earth. Mother Earth is to blame for the virus. So um, fortunately, there are plenty of people in the other category who are using their precious time constructively. First and foremost, of course, are the nurses, the doctors, the first responders who are putting their own hides on the line to save what? Perfect, perfect strangers, people they don't even know. And they're providing them not only with first class medical care, but in some cases, like at, at Vanderbilt University Medical Center in Nashville, where we used to live, they're also providing their patients with spiritual care. It's awesome. There are also people that I read about who, you know, just ordinary people who are coming up with creative ways to help their neighbors. It's awesome. You don't normally see that during, you know, regular times. And our own church here in Dallas, Gateway Church, has come up with a clever way of helping people all over the world. They've created this, this kind of texting helpline where if you text the word connect to the number 71010, um, somebody will reply to you. If you have a medical need, if you have an emotional need, a spiritual need, it doesn't matter what. If you have a need of any kind during this pandemic, all you have to do is uh, text CONNECT to 71010. Well, that's a creative way of helping people. And then there are, there are people who are using their precious free time right now to improve themselves, to invest in themselves, to enrich themselves, to learn something new. You know, I got to confess, <laughs> over the years, I have used one finger to type. Uh, this one finger is responsible for typing a whole lot of books, and it's tired. So I figured, you know what, I'm going to use some of this precious time to teach myself how to properly type with both hands. So, you know, I found an online uh, typing program, and I'm doing it. It's not easy, but I feel like day to day, I'm improving myself. I hope by the end of this pandemic, we'll know how to type properly. We'll see. But what I also want to talk to you about today is that when I read uh, about people in both categories, uh, how people are using their, their precious time during this pandemic, I, I'm reminded of a concept in physics called phase transitions. Phase transitions. And what is that? Okay, there are materials, lots of materials in the world, that will undergo a very deep-rooted, meaningful change. Um, they remain the same substance, but they change in a very deep and meaningful way. So take water, for example, H2O. In the solid phase, the, the H2O molecules are locked together very tightly, right? So that's one phase of water. Um, if you add heat to it, you know, it melts. And so those, those bonds loosen and they become more fluid. So that's the second state of water. And then if you add even more heat, uh, those molecules become very free and they become a gas, steam. It's not that water is changing its substance, it's still H2O, and that's what's fascinating about phase transitions. It's still the same thing, but it kind of rearranges itself, it reorganizes itself into something new and marvelous. And it usually does it under some kind of a stress. I'll come back to that in a second. Okay, so. We've known all that for centuries, but it was in the 1970s that a guy came along, his name was Ken Wilson, and he was at Cornell when I was a grad student, so I got to know him. I was very privileged to know Ken. 
And, and he made a huge contribution to face transition. But let me just tell you about Ken first. He was a very kind of shy guy, um, nerdy, you would say, but shy and sweet spirit. And <laughs> it was funny because I would go into the student union there at Cornell, and I think it was on Thursday nights they would have folk dancing night, and there would be Ken, you know, this renowned physicist. Uh, <laughs> folk dancing. And he was really good. I mean, he took it seriously. So this was Ken Wilson, the man. But um, Ken applied all his know-how, which is very formidable, to phase transitions. And what he discovered actually won him the Nobel Prize in 1982. And I was there during the celebration when we were raising a glass to Ken winning the Nobel Prize. That was quite an experience for a, a grad student. But Ken... Kent discovered this about phase transition. He found out that a system undergoing a phase transition is in a state of upheaval at all levels, the smallest level to the largest level. There was no, there's no part of a system that's undergoing a phase transition that isn't involved. If you will, it's all in. All parts of the system are all in. It's fully committed. And the result of that full commitment is a phase transition into something new and marvelous. And so to summarize, phase transitions require two things. Number one, upheavals. You have to apply some stress or you have to change the environment of the material in order to trigger a phase transition. So upheaval is required. And then a kind of a total commitment, kind of an all-in attitude by the material in order to accomplish this deep-rooted, meaningful change. So why am I telling you this? I think you know where I'm going. Phase transitions apply not just to water and magnetic materials and electrically conducting materials. It can apply to people, you and me. And so what I want to do is I want to end by returning to the question I asked you. And that is, how are you using your precious time during this pa pandemic? Um, are you using this time just to be you, uh, to be the same old you, let's say to, to, to be lazy, to, to scam people, hopefully not, you're a good person, right? Or to play that stupid blame game uh, that accomplishes nothing? Um, or are you using this precious time to experience a phase transition, really, to you know, undergo a deep-rooted, meaningful change in who you are. You'll still be who you are, but you will rearrange yourself in a, in a brand new, marvelous way. You have that capacity. And this is a perfect time to trigger that capacity. You have the time. When will you have this kind of time again? Think about that. So, but here's the commitment. Remember, upheaval and total commitment. So, if you say, yeah, okay, I'm into experiencing a phase transition. Are you all in, really? If you are all in, then you will look back at this pandemic when it's over, and you will see it not as a once-in-a-lifetime calamity. You'll see it as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to renew yourself, to rearrange yourself, to become a whole new you. Even though you're you, you're a whole new you. But if you're not into that, if you're not all in, then forget about it. If your commitment is only half-hearted and you're, you know, one day, it, yeah, yeah, and the next day you're nah, not so sure, you're going to just look at yourself in the mirror when this pandemic is over and you're going to see the same old you. You're going to see the same person you were before this pandemic and what a waste what a waste of all that suffering all that suffering will have been for naught all that suffering would have been in vain and that my friend even more than the virus itself even more than the pandemic itself will be the real tragedy okay so here's to face transitions a whole new you and uh, thank you for tuning in. And until next time, be safe, be strong, and above all, be positive.